if you like how I do it, I teach you how here, one time $45 fee, no monthly or ongoing subscriptions. video we just got a tornado warning like 20 minutes ago I'm working out of a trailer hi guys so I'm getting several questions what the differences are between the TIG button variable amperage controller that I sell and then the new TIG slide lever that I've been using and how I'll show you how they install and then the pros and cons of each one in this video why I like them both for different reasons so first off, the slide lever installs really easy, just like a foot pedal. All you do is just take your foot pedal plug out, plug this in, you're good to go. And then to turn your amperage on, you click that down. And then if you want your amperage higher or lower, you just push up and back and forth like this. And then to turn the amperage off, you just do that. The switch latch is on and off. So you can release pressure. You, know, you can put it at mid amperage and leave it and it stays rock steady there. And then the TIG button to install it, since it runs through a control box, you need a 120 volt source, and then it just runs up. This is all included, and then it runs up this USB-C input, and then this cable plugs into where your foot pedal normally plugs in, and then you plug in the lead cable into the box and run it up to the pressure sensor that goes on your torch. So that all plugs in. Pretty quick and easy install too, there's just more parts. That's why it costs a little more too, because there's a you know control box. Because there's no off on switch up here, you just lightly push down, and this senses it and kicks the welder on, then you release and it kicks the welder off. And the new ones don't have a button on them, they've got a wider control surface area, so it's more sensitive and you have more range, you know, where you don't, you don't need to put your finger right on a, a stiff button. So that works a little better. And then either one, you know, just run them up your, your protective sheaths to your torch zip tie them down, velcro them down tight and snug. Make sure there's enough slack where you're twisting and moving around, you're not yanking on these wires and pulling them out. And the newer Miller machines don't require a 120 volt plug. They actually back feed through the machine and power the box, so that's kind of neat. And if you don't have a 120 volt plug close to your 220, 240 volt welder plug, you can just get a, a fairly cheap battery pack off Amazon and just put it on the machine and run this. This takes very little electricity, it'll last a really long time. Okay, first off, I'll demonstrate the TIG button. So just, like I said, Velcro it wherever you want. You can slide it up and down the torch, and then just lightly push pressure and it turns the gas on. And then, the more amperes you want, just push a little bit harder. So that's maxed out, half amperage, lower, and shut it off. Really intuitive, just push harder and you get more heat. Okay, now I have the welder set at 75 amps. So right now I'm pushing really hard just to show you the max amperage. Then I'm gonna back off. So it starts jumping down from the max amperage of around, what, I don't know, 11, 12 ounces, maybe? So the closest thing I usually compare it to is just keeping the pressure required to keep a big lighter lit. It starts gassing out at about the same pressure. So not that much, you know, if you can if you can sit there and hold a big lighter like that, then you're good to go. And then the slide lever that I designed and also sell, you just click it on and that starts the arc. Then just slide it wherever you want it. And there's no pressure required to keep it going. Like here, I'll put it back down to 40. Then just let off so it's rock solid. And then just to stop the arc, 
click it off wherever you want. And for most people, this one takes a little bit of getting used to. If your natural tendency is to squeeze down on the torch real hard, it doesn't take much pressure to cut the arc off, see? So you need to get in the habit of pulling forward and back and not pushing down at all when you adjust the amperage. I don't have a problem with it personally. I like to use my finger way up here. But if you have a problem, you can just run your finger back on the pad further so you have less accidental leverage down. This takes a little bit of practice. So lots of people ask which one's better, and I honestly don't think one's better versus the other. This one's a little bit cheaper, this one costs more. There's no moving parts on this one, so you know, perhaps if you guys are rough on parts, but these are pretty durable too. You know, as long as you're not really hard on it and you end up somehow hooking and yanking this plastic lever off, you should be just fine. No matter what amperage controller you're using, or even if you're just using a foot pedal, I strongly recommend you make your own torch holder. Not one of those weird looking ones with all the slots and hook points that sits on top of a table. Get a mag base like this, I'll leave a link below. And then all, all it is is just eighth inch aluminum wire or stainless, whatever you want, with a nut and a threaded stud. You could use a bolt if you wanted. And then just bend these exactly how you want to conform to your torch and then it hangs under your table, you know, so it's not up on, on the table in the way. I like my workspace as clean as possible. So the magnet's got an off-on lever, so just turn it off, figure out where you want it, flip that switch and it holds in place really strong. And then just hook that right next to where you're welding so it's down out of the way. I put mine barely under like that, so if something falls off, it can't hit it. And it's strong, you know, the only way that's going to yank off is if you accidentally step on the lead pretty hard. And then you would want it to fall and break away anyway, so you're not yanking water cooler lines or air lines out of your hose and damaging it. And it's good to have one on each side of your table, you know, depending on what you're working with. Or if you're one of those weird all right handers. Okay, like I said at the first, one's not better than the other, but I'm going to go over a few scenarios where I think this would be better and vice versa, this would be better. So about 18 years ago, I used to make a lot of these awnings and they're just one inch square tube. Some of them were like 40 feet long, pretty long. And I was using a foot pedal and boy, that got pretty tedious dragging and kicking around a foot pedal for you know 20, 40 foot long runs while you're welding all those little one inch square tubes together. It would have been so much nicer to have a hand amperage controller back then. So if you were welding a bunch of parts like this, it just needed quick one inch welds. Then the tick button might be a little bit quicker, I guess, and maybe just more intuitive. You just, you mindlessly just go after it versus the slide lever. second thought I, I thought that might have been different but it's really not that much different they're both real fast pretty welds with either one I accidentally touched down right there though it's my own fault just trying to weld pretty fast and I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably wondering well why not just use a simple off on switch like a lot of machines come with well so I just have the welder set at 300 amps so when I come in here and the parts are cold, I can mash it, get my puddle going, ramp off, get to the end, and then let off amperage so I don't blow a hole or make a really thin spot on the ends. 
Whereas an off on switch, if you get your amperage set, just it's fixed amperage, so you can't adjust it. It's just on or off. So if you want it to leave a pretty weld, you got to set it kind of on the low side on the machine, click it on, wait for it to heat up. That's going to take a lot longer and then start going. And then at the end, it's still going to be too hot. You know, or if you set it at 300 amps like I did, then it blasts 300, then it's way too hot and you got to chase it and risk blowing the end out. So yeah, for me, variable amperage is a must when you're TIG welding. So a scenario I know that I would like the slide lever better is longer welds with really nice fit where you know you want to fix solid amperage the whole way down the weld. For me, you know, I, I can get it done a little bit more consistently with that slide lever because you just put the amperage right where you want and let off. Whereas the, the TIG button, you know, you're pushing pressure and it might vary a few amps here and there, but I've been using the TIG button too for the past seven years and you've seen all the parts that I've welded with that. It works great, so. Almost all of these parts were welded with a TIG button on my website, 6061.com if you're interested. Lots of videos on here that aren't listed on YouTube publicly. TIG button used on this one, welder settings shown too for this. And it's not the typical pulse or settings that everybody says on YouTube, you know, like the rules of three, which I never use or any other, other ones, mine are way different. It really does come down to this personal preference. So at the first I just started it up, increased the heat a little bit with a slide lever, got the puddle width I wanted and just released all pressure and started welding. Okay, now the TIG button. both work great and I've tried all the other amperage controllers I'm not gonna bash any of them but they're they're honestly awkward to use and kind of cumbersome compared to these two I know that sounds like a biased opinion because I sell both of these but I'm willing to let you if you try these out and make sure they stay in brand new condition and you return them in the original packaging I can give you a full refund all I ask is that you show me a quick video of why you like a different one better and how it works better than the ones I sell if you're doing anything where you're not sitting comfortably at a chair, even if you are, I still prefer these just because you can keep your posture better. You're not twisting your hips funny, putting one leg up on a pedal, you know. I quit using a pedal, I don't know, eight, maybe eight years ago because I was having back problems, leaning over funny sideways. Now with these ones, you know, you can put both your feet flat on the floor and keep really nice posture, minimizes neck strain and back pains. But if you're doing, anyways, if you're doing any type of work where you're standing up or sitting down on the floor, like any low work or up ladders, stuff like that, or like I told you those Aaron's awning, awnings, those long ones, where you have stuff on saw horses, kicking the pedal around is miserable. It's so much nicer to have variable amperage right on your torch to walk around. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully that answered all you guys' questions. I saw both of these on my website, 6061.com.